Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I have a very dirty airbrush, and it needs cleaned badly. So I thought I would take this opportunity and show you how I do a deep clean on my airbrushes. So before we get started, one thing. I am going to be cleaning my Badger Sotar 2020 airbrush. Now, if you don't have this airbrush, that is perfectly fine. You can follow along just as long as you understand how to disassemble and reassemble your airbrush. And I actually already made a video on how to disassemble and reassemble different types of airbrushes. And I'll go ahead and put a link to that video right up here. But as long as you're comfortable doing that, keep going forward on this video because I'm going to show you how I do a deep clean on my airbrush and after this it is going to be spick and span so let's go ahead jump over to the table and get started okay so I have every single thing here that I use to clean my airbrush so as you can see here my SOTAR 2020 is just really filthy. I mean, it's got a lot of paint buildup on the outside. There's paint on the inside I can't fully clean out. And my needle is starting to stick when I'm pulling it out, which is a big sign of the paint channel is got some paint buildup in it. So it's time for me to do a deep clean of this. Now, this is how I do a deep clean with my airbrush. There are so many different ways to clean your airbrush. So I'm just going to show you how I clean it. I'm just going to quickly go over all of the tools that I use. So first, Q-tips. I have these that aren't quite Q-tips. They're more of giant toothpicks with cotton on the end of them. The tips are actually cotton. These are really good for cleaning out your smaller areas like in the air nozzle and in the nozzle cap. Then I have just regular Q-tips and baby Q-tips, the safety Q-tips. These are really good for just cleaning some bigger areas. I also have a toothbrush that I use to clean and also this denture brush. I got this actually at the dollar store. It's a nice little brush to clean because it's got the smaller brush and a bigger brush on the other end. Then I have my soft jawed pliers. And as you see here, I've got my regular pliers, and this is just to show you do not want to use regular pliers on your airbrush. You can mess up the nozzle and needle cap and get it all, you know, scratched up, and you don't want to do that. So you want to protect it and use soft-jawed pliers. The other thing for my specific airbrush, this ergonomic little guard right here is plastic and you need an allen key right there which this is what i've got and this is a 3 64th allen key and that's what i need to just unscrew that little allen screw right there to pull this off then i've got some small wire brushes they're basically like little pot pipe cleaners and then the same thing with no brushes at all to just help with the channels then i've got this cleaning needle that is great for kind of getting out any paint buildup that I can't get with anything else. Then I have two containers full of my cleaning solution, which is super clean. And I'll throw a picture of what it looks like right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and clear this space and start disassembling the airbrush. Ten seconds later. First, I'm going to unscrew the needle chucking nut and pull out my needle. Set my needle aside. Then I'm going to unscrew this. So then I am going to unscrew the handle, take the needle chucking nut off. Then I'm taking the trigger off. Now I need to unscrew the spring guide. There we go. Pull out the auxiliary lever. Now I'm gonna take the Allen key and unscrew this plastic guide. That's really just for ergonomics. And then I need to take my valve adapter, unscrew it. And then this slides right off. Next is the needle cap and nozzle cap. And I'm just gonna take my soft jawed pliers. And this has got so much paint buildup on it, I cannot get the needle cap off of the nozzle cap. So I'm just gonna leave this right now and get this cleaned and then after it's been soaking, it'll come off. And I've got my nozzle and I just take my soft jawed pliers and pull it out very gently. 
In the Badger Sotar, this is just a pressure fit, so it's not actually threaded in. There are different kinds to where you actually have to screw them in. And there we go. So I've got this thing completely disassembled now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little one, and this is just straight cleaner of the Super Clean, and I put all of my tiny stuff that's just metal right in there to let it soak. So I'm gonna put my trigger in there, my needle cap and nozzle cap, and I want enough in there that it's completely submerged. Now I am not disassembling my spring guide because there's no paint on this and it's very clean since the last time I cleaned it. And I don't see a reason why I need to clean it because I have grease in here on the spring and to help with the actual trigger. So I'm just going to leave this. You don't always have to clean every single piece and part. If it looks clean, just leave it. The main issue I'm having is the front end where all of the paint actually flows. So then I'm just going to take my cap and make sure that that doesn't come out. Then I have my bigger container and I am going to go ahead and put the whole body just directly in there. Completely submerge it. I'm also just going to kind of swish around my needle because I'm going to clean that right now. I'm also just going to get this wet with this stuff because I'm going to clean this as well. I'm not going to let this soak, the plastic soak in here. I don't let anything with plastic or a rubber gasket soak in here because I don't want it to eat it away. Because this is really a degreaser, but it does great on paint for me. Okay, so now that I've got the body in there soaking, I'm going to cover it up. So I've got a microfiber towel that I am just going to wipe this down real good. And typically just dipping this stuff in gets it all off. So you can see already, I got it nice and clean. And there we go. And then the same thing for the needle. I'm just basically swiping it back like this because I do not want to damage the needle in any way. Now that I've got these two things soaking, I'm going to come back in about an hour or two and then I am going to start cleaning up the pieces. Three hours later. Okay, so this has been sitting a while and I went ahead and put on some gloves because I just don't want to get my hands covered in this cleaner. And then I've got myself some paper towels. So all I'm going to do is take this out and make sure everything drains from it. Then set my cleaning tub aside and just set this on here. Okay, so now that it's clean for a while, this is what I love about this stuff. So you see how gross and nasty this looks. I'm just going to take a paper towel and do a little wiping action here. Ta-da! So I gotta wipe it a little more, get everything nice and clean off of it, get it and just wipe out the color cup. And just wipe it down real good. And all that paint, you can see, is just coming right off. And for some of those tougher spots, all I ever do, so if you see in the crack right there, there's a little bit, and on the edges, I'll just dip it back in the cleaning solution just to get it wet again bring it back over and just keep wiping it away and you can also just kind of dip your brush in that cleaning solution for some of those cracks you can't really get in and just brush it then what i'll do is i will take my brushes and i find the one that fits in the channel and it's this one right here and I will dip it in the solution to get a little on it and just stick it in there back and forth a couple times and that cleans it real good and then once I've done that I'll dip it back in the solution fill up the color cup and just kind of let it drain through that hole to get any of that debris that might be in there. Then I'll get the one that doesn't have the bristles on it and I'll stick it through and go all the way through. So you can see right here, I'll go all the way through it 
just to make sure that you know the whole channel where the needle comes is cleared out and just clean the color cup and I'll just clean out the paint cup again make sure it's nice and clean squeaky clean and just so you can see here what I do is I just kind of fill up the cup and let it pour out and wipe it down clean it off real good so now I'm gonna just set this aside because this is a hundred percent clean now and now I'm going to get my little pieces and these are hard to grab so I just use tweezers to get it out of the solution and another thing if you can't see all of that grime in there this was actually just clean solution that I put in there so you can see that it just soaking actually peeled off a lot of that paint. Now that it's been soaking, I can actually remove the needle cap from the nozzle cap because it broke it up the paint enough. So now I've got these two separate and I'm going to just drop them back in, swish them around a little bit and then just get one out at a time for this, I'm going to use a Q-tip to just kind of roll it around there and clean it out real nice. And you can see all the gunk on there. And you can also take a little brush or a toothbrush and just try to clean it as good as you can. The great thing about this cleaning solution is it just eats away paint. Acrylic paint, I should say. So I'm just going to take a fresh paper towel, get it in there, and just clean it real good. Just wipe it all down as good as I can. And then I will take a new Q-tip and wipe it out on the inside. Just spin it around. And there we go. We have a nice clean needle cap. So I'm just going to set that aside. And now I'm going to get out the nozzle cap. And the same thing as I did before. just cleaning it with a q-tip and you want to make sure all of those holes are nice and clean because that is where the airflow comes in and mixes with the paint if any of those are clogged your spray won't come out as clean and it can also affect your pressure then I'm just going to clean it real good with a brush and it does get a little foamy just kind of keep spinning it around There we go. And then just wipe it off real good and lose it in the paper towel. There it is. And then I'll just take one last Q-tip and make sure I got it all cleaned out. So I'll set this aside now. Now I'll get the trigger and this just needs wiped down with a paper towel because it's big enough. There we go. That wasn't too dirty. So the last piece is our tiny little nozzle. And what I actually have here is a needle from my 3D printer to clear the nozzle and on the 3D printer. And I will actually take that, lift it up like that, and I will hold the end of it and just kind of circle around the edge of it just to try to get any paint buildup. And I don't know if you can see this, but there is gunk in that nozzle. So I'm going to just take this very fine needle and what I do is it's the same diameter as the airbrush needle so I can actually get the tip through there and make sure I get the tip nice and clean then I'll take a q-tip and just kinda of push it and see if I can get it clean and then also the bristles of the brush that helps as well And I'll dip it in my solution. Just clean that as good as you can. But you want to be very careful because this is a very delicate piece. And if you're going to use a needle, don't stab yourself. Because it hurts. And handling it with gloves can be sometimes difficult. And it looks like we got all that little gunk out of there. And now it's nice and clean. So I'm going to set this aside now. 
Now I'm going to clear this space and reassemble the airbrush. Ten seconds later. All right, to reassemble this airbrush, I'm going to use a couple things. Obviously, the Allen key that I previously used, soft jawed pliers. I've also got this white lithium grease that I use, and I put just a tiny bit on the threads and moving parts. That way, when I disassemble it next time, it won't stick and seize up on me. Then I also have this Badger needle juice. Now, needle juice is great because it kind of coats the tip of your needle to help with the flow of your paint and to help with clogs as well. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is the nozzle. So before I assemble it, I forgot one last thing. Right here in the passage, I'm going to take one of these precision Q-tips, which basically is a cute cotton on a stick, and go in there and wipe this out. Wipe out around where the air channel is. And this is just to ensure that those holes are nice and clean, and they are, because there was just a little bit of gunk on there. Now what I'm gonna do is take my nozzle, put it back on, and one thing to note is when it comes to your nozzle cap, it will only go on one way. So if you see these holes right here, they're usually closer to one side when you're on a badger, and then there's the deep side. The deep side is the side that you're going to screw on to your airbrush. But first, I'm going to put just, a, I mean, a tiny, tiny dab of white lithium grease on there. And that is literally it, just a tiny dab. And make absolutely sure you do not cross thread the actual nozzle cap. And I am just going to tighten it just a tiny bit more with the soft jawed pliers. Not much, I will say that. I'm just doing a little bit, a little past what I can my finger tight. Then I'm gonna take the do the exact same thing and just touch the threads a tiny bit with this white lithium grease. So then I will go ahead and put on the needle cap and also just make absolutely sure you're not cross threading. And there we go. So with the needle cap, I am not using the pliers. All right, so now that's done. All right, so next I'm going to go ahead and put this guard or this little grippy back on and it just slides on. And then you just take the Allen key and spin it back on, tighten it. Then the nozzle adapter. Now I'm going to take the trigger and install it. Then I'm going to take the auxiliary lever. An important thing to note too, the curved portion, the big curved area, that actually goes towards the back. And there we go. And now the spring guide, I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny bit of grease on the threads. Just like that. And install that. There we go, just check my lever. Spring is looking good. So then I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on my needle chucking guide, just a little. Then put on my needle chucking nut. And what I do with this, when I apply the grease, I actually tighten it all the way and then I untighten it just a little bit so the needle can go back on. Then the same thing for the handle. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a tiny bit of grease on it. Then install that. Then I've got the stop guide right here that I'm going to put just a little bit of grease on as well on the threads. And install that. Now for the last part, the needle. Now this is what I do with the needle. So I have my needle juice and I actually just leave the seal on and I just kind of peel it back a little bit and then I just dip my needle in there and pull it out. Then I'll take a paper towel and just roll it to get all the excess off. I do not want to wipe it off. I just basically roll it off to get any of those beads that are left on. Because I want the needle juice to coat the needle and I don't want to wipe it off. Then I install my needle back in. and make sure everything flows really nicely. Then I tighten my needle chucking nut, and there we go. I have a perfectly clean airbrush, and that is the process of how I deep clean my airbrush. 
I hope this video has helped you. If you have any comments, questions, or actually you might do it a different way, I'd love to hear from you. And if you've enjoyed this video, please help support the channel by hitting that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Other than that, I wish you a great day, and I will see you in the next video.